push through. Um, this is going to end. So just maintain positivity. Uh, this isn't going to be, you know, the norm forever. So yeah. embrace it while you can. One of Blue Grace's um, major things that we say all the time, one of our core values is embrace chaos. So embrace it and lean into it and make something of it. Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to another great episode of the Sales Evangelist Podcast. I'm your host, Donald Kelly, the Sales Evangelist. And I'm so excited for another great episode. I'm so excited to be here with you today. And obviously, we're doing more videos, and I really like that. And I, I want to get a chance to connect with you further and to give you information in a way that you want to best digest it. And on today's episode, I have two guests. There, it's a co. It's a, these two individuals that are doing pretty well as BDRs. They both work for a company called Blue Grace Logistics here in Florida. And I wanted to pick their brain and figure out what they're doing right now, especially during the coronavirus outbreak, to connect with people on LinkedIn. How can you do this? Many of you have conversations with your friends or you're thinking about it or you have questions or you're thinking it may be insensitive to do sales, but people are still thriving and people are still doing well. How and what are they doing? And I want to help you with that. So we're going to go ahead and dive into the conversation and connect with Amanda and Jason. Welcome to the show, Amanda and Jason. Thanks. Thanks, Donald. I appreciate you having us. Well, I appreciate you both of you joining us today and to share some insights because a lot of us now who are entry-level sellers or BDRs, SDRs, or frontline folks, people who are there to call the prospect, they're having some tough times. I mean, it's a, it, we're yeah. in the middle of COVID right now. We're trying to figure out what are we going to do and how are we best going to go about uh, to be successful in our role. But many of us are spending time on LinkedIn, and I want to pick your brain to learn what are some of the things that you're doing as for, uh, folks who are SDRs, um, things that are working for you. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But before we dive into all the fun stuff, I want to get from you all um, just a little bit more about you and what you do. So Amanda, why don't you tell us a bit, little bit more about you? Yeah, thanks. Um, so I was born and raised in Virginia Beach. I moved to Tampa probably about a year and a half ago to work for Blue Grace. So I've been a BDR, now a team lead, um, started BDR about four years ago. So I absolutely love selling. Um, but right now I'm working for Blue Grace Logistics in Tampa. Awesome. And how about you, Jason? Yeah, so I'm originally from Chicago. Um, so I came down to Tampa actually for school here, the University of Tampa. I've worked in sports sponsorship um, and event sponsorship um, and then found my way uh, to Blue Grace. Um, so that's just about uh, 10 minutes from downtown. So it's a perfect location. That's where I met Amanda and she's kind of taught me how to be a, a full BDR um, in the logistics industry. So it's been, it's been great. Nice. So Amanda got all these secrets that she's going to share now, pass on to us. Yeah, as well. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, let's just like talk about it. I mean, it's like the elephant in the room selling during COVID like at this time, like what, what are some of your initial feelings about go, uh, selling at this time? I start off with you, Amanda, any thoughts? Yeah, sure. So my initial thought was, this is going to be very awkward. Um, <laughs> especially in the logistics Just being industry. honest. Yeah, yeah. Especially in the logistics world. A lot of manufacturing companies are, you know, shutting down or taking time um, at home right now. So my initial thought was, this is going to be very awkward. Um, but the more you think about it, you know, um, we're here really as a resource and to try to help other companies that are probably feeling the same way we are right now. Yeah. How about you, Jason? What are some, what were some of your thoughts like a week ago or, or two weeks ago when this stuff started coming down? Yeah. Yeah. This is our, our third week working from home now. So I think my initial thought was like, oh man, sales during a pandemic, um, <laughs> nobody's going to be buying anything. Um, and, and it was a, a tough first week, but, but I think realizing that we are, you know, essential um to to helping you know manage transportation for for essential products it's it's cool to be able to help those those people you know in need those companies that need us for for that you know um extra boost and, and to continue running so amanda i mean both of you could probably jump in on this one like so in your role right now uh, specifically are you what what is management said is it like you job your job nothing has changed you're still trying to get new net new business is that correct or yeah, whatever. so um, business as usual, um, nothing has really changed except for the approach. That's something that we've talked about a lot. We still have goals that we have to hit, right? We're all in sales, so at the end of the day, that's the goal. Um, okay. But right now, it's, it's hey, let's 
build more relationships, be more of a resource to someone, um, and really approach it in that manner. So from management down, that's what we've been told. Um, do what you can. These are hard times. Let's build those relationships. If it's not a now sell, maybe it'll be one in the future. So what has, let's talk about what was your pitch or your, your message before, you, um, before COVID a month ago? So a month ago, um, we typically partner with companies and we learn more about their supply chain. Um, we want to see if we can help save them money and drive out costs within their network. So my approach a month ago was, hey, I would love to learn more about your supply chain. I want to see if we can help you save money to drive out costs within your network um, and, and really gain a better understanding of what you're doing today. And then, so now post COVID, what are you guys, what are you guys saying? Mm -hmm. Or in sure. the middle of COVID? <laughs> yeah. So um, now that, you know, COVID-19 has graced us with its presence, um, mm -hmm. my approach is more so how is this impacting your company? Um, let's talk about that. Let's find out how it's impacting you and your organization. And is there any way that we can help you uh, through this and maybe help lessen the impact of your company right now? And so much of that is just, I think, uh, to piggyback off that is learning how we're helping our current clients. And then, you know, as they kind of go down the road to recovery, explaining that to our current prospects who might be dealing with the same things, uh, you know, within this, the same industry. Um, so hopefully we can help them on that, that road. Do you all see a difference in the, um, well, like, do you, see, do you see a difference in a way people are responding to that message? I mean, as far Absolutely. as like, yeah, for sure. What, you, what have you seen, Amanda? Um, so it really differs from person to person. Um, some people are very open to having a conversation. Um, they're very empathetic to the fact that everyone is in this together. Um, yeah. And then others are, hey, why are you even asking me <laughs> anything right now? <laughs> We're in the middle of a pandemic um, because I have a job to do. Um, yeah. So I think it just, it just varies from person to person. I don't know if it's personality um, thing, or maybe they just have an understanding that, Hey, we're all in this, in this together and let's have a conversation, but it's, it's definitely changed a lot. Yeah. And I think it's, I, I like the idea that you're, you got, you all are sharing, like coming as a resource or coming as a value add to those prospects. And one thing you said, Amanda earlier that I thought was, in, you know, stuck out to me, especially someone who's still doing outreach for my business as well is that I'm, it may not be something that I, that's going to happen now, but it may be a sale for later. Um, yeah, absolutely. Which brings up the next portion of our conversation is what means are you guys seeing as you're doing your prospecting is getting you the most attention right now? Is that phone calls? Are people picking up the phones? Are you, is it emails or is it social? Um, but which one of those are you leading with and you're seeing the most results from? Maybe we could start with you, Jason. Yeah, absolutely. I think we're all seeing a mix right now. Um, yeah. You know, just looking at our team breakdown, we're still having meetings set from from phone calls, emails, and LinkedIn, which we had before. Um, so I really think we still have to stick to to all three um, because people work differently. Um, you know, I would definitely be better you know reaching out to LinkedIn versus a phone call or whatnot. So I think people are are still different. So we still have to be able to to target our prospects and on multiple channels, um, but just being, you know, respectful for, to the fact that they may be going through a lot right now. You know, we don't necessarily know what everybody's going through. Yeah. What about you, Amanda? What are you seeing? Same thing? Yeah. So the same thing. I'm also, um, I'm getting, I don't want to say a lot of responses via email, but I'm getting a lot more opens uh, on my email right now and a lot more clicks to links that I'm sending. I'm just trying to be a resource for them. Hey, this is what we're seeing in the industry now. Um, that has gone way up. It has skyrocketed for me. So that tells me that in the future, they're going to be somebody that I'm going to want to re-engage with. Um, and the being a resource and trying to be there to let them know what's going on in the world um, is benefiting them in some way because they're continuing to open and continuing to read those. Um, and then LinkedIn. Like I, LinkedIn is my constant. I want to find out, hey, how are you? Right? It's just like you would talk to a friend right now. Um, I want to find out what they're doing. Um, so LinkedIn is my go-to right now for sure. So, and let's pivot into that. So specifically with LinkedIn, we are spending more and more time there. What are you seeing that's working particularly on LinkedIn well for you? Um, so like what, what ideas do you guys have or any stories or anything that your team has shared or you seeing that's uh, being more effective when it comes to connecting with folks on LinkedIn? Um, I think really just being authentic 
um, right now and not jumping right into the, hey, I'm, I want to sell you something. Yeah. Um, but really just opening up with a, a conversation like you and I are having right now. Hey, how are you? How's COVID-19 affecting you? Are you working remotely? You know, just opening up a slower conversation and getting to know the person on a personal level um, and then kind of saying, look, if you ever need anything in the future, this is how we can benefit your organization. Um, that's been working really well for me. What about yeah, you? And I think, yeah, I think um, bringing that empathy piece into it from the beginning all the way to the end, you know, making sure that I'm leading with that empathy and just making sure that they're doing all right at first and trying to have that conversation. And even if it is a no, you know, making sure that I'm still following up with those people saying, hey, you know, I hope you and your family are doing well, you know, throughout this. Um, just because those are people that I'm going to circle back to um, in a mm -hmm. few months. So I want to make sure that I leave it on a, on a good note and that I'm looking out for people, um, not just, you know, sending out those blank messages. Because when I, either when, when me or somebody on my team um, reaches back out to them in a few months, I want to make sure that they have a good taste in their mouth. Yeah. Do you find that, how, how do you typically generate people on your list right now? Are you using something like a Zoom info or are you just using Sales Navigator to, to get your leads in the first place or just folks that are inbound or you maybe have a database already? Yeah. So we have um, Zoom info um, that we do use a lot um, and then various you know, platforms. We do use LinkedIn a lot too. Um, you know, finding those people within the newer positions and, and, and whatnot and looking at the, the different industries that we have success with um, in particular at Blue Grace. Yeah. What about you, Amanda? Yeah, same. So we use um, Zoom Info, Sales Navigator. Um, and then also, I would say that our pipeline that we've built up over the past, you know, I've been at Blue Grace for two years now and in the industry for four. Um, so really just reaching back out to people we've spoken to in the past. Um, just to do that follow up. Hey, how are you? I'm here to help um, is another thing that we're trying to do also. You know, I, I, one of the things I counsel people on and, and coach uh, my clients and, and teams I work with is to have a daily dose of LinkedIn connections, like people you actually reach out to and you build some connections with them. Um, and then trying to get those people into the inbox. And so if you, let's say for instance, and, uh, a BDR is doing 10 connections per day, 50 a week. You know, those are obviously not all of them are going to accept your connection request, but let's say you're, you know, you, you do a personal note to them and you're seeing, you know, getting half of them to respond back. Those are people you can open up dialogue with, like you're saying, Amanda, with that, that approach. Um, that's one of the things that we do internally here. Um, as well. And I, I'm starting to share more content. Do you guys see that as well? Are you, share, are you sharing content more? You find yourself sharing content or anything that your company have that you're sharing, um, curating or anything on that yeah. side of the front? Yeah. So we're trying to share a lot more content, especially right now. Um, you know, we work with a lot of manufacturing companies that are shipping. Um, so transportation is taking a major hit in places like New York and California. Um, the cost is driving up tremendously in truckload right now. So just being that resource and putting together content to say, hey, this is what we're seeing in the market right now, um, to put that in front of them so that they have that information from, you know, I want to be an industry expert in the room. I want to be the industry leader. So to give them that information, they might not have access to it. So we're absolutely trying to put more content in front of them right now. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel if there's anyone that's like a, like SDR, BDR role, that's one of the big things I tell them. I've always preached that idea, but I think it's even more pertinent right now because you're going to find some people who are going to just sit back and they're going to say, I, I don't have anything to share. I don't know what to share. So I'm not going to share anything. It's like right now, everyone is on their freaking phones. Like everyone, everyone. Is, is either if they're working from home, they're going to be on their phone even more. So, so mm -hmm. it's like, can I get in front of their, get enough, uh, get in their eyeballs um, or get in front of their eyeballs and uh, take over their news feed, so to speak, um, their LinkedIn news feed. And I think one of the other things that uh, I've seen to be working well to at least drum up conversations is I'm using the birthday stuff. Like when somebody has the birthday, I, I will, uh, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I send a generic birthday thing back that, you know, LinkedIn pops <laughs> up. But I, what I've been doing recently is doing the generic, but also adding to it. Hope you and your family are safe or, you know, saying something personal, like you're saying, give that empathy back to it. And if I doing something like that, it's um, providing some dialogue. And then again, for me, and the only thing that I want is to start a dialogue and then to get the person to jump into a conversation. And someone did this with me yesterday and a big shout out to him is the folks over at Refract. 
and they, the, anyways, we started, uh, he, can I send the connection request? Then I connected with him and then we started to talk. And then, um, anyways, he led to the conversation about what I do and then asked if he would be open to learning, if I was open to learn more about their solutions. I knew about it a little bit, but they had some changes. So we jumped on a call and it wasn't like anything fresh. It was just like a 15 minute call and he stuck to his guns when it was like 15 minutes. It was, it was 15 minutes and then determined if it was a fit or not. And it wasn't a fit right now. But the point is he landed an appointment with someone that was, you know, could be a potential interest that's maybe a not right now, but in the several months, once we pulled through this, and I thought that was like, it did it masterfully well. And it, there's a lot of empathy that led with it. And I think that's one of the, the big ideas there too, that SDRs can take advantage of, right? Yeah, absolutely. I, I love that birthday thing. Um, I was just <laughs> telling Jason, <laughs> I was just telling Jason before our um, conversation today that I just used the same thing yesterday for a, a chief supply chain officer in a major company. It was his birthday. Um, so we joked about spending it in quarantine. So yeah. That's a very good idea. It works. Yeah. And what I've been seeing too is people with their role changes. Like I, I didn't think, you know, many people are going to have their you know new jobs, but I'm getting a lot of people saying, you know, getting in different roles. So I'm hitting them up and telling them like, you know, Hey, congratulations on your new role, blah, blah, blah. And that's leading to conversation. And yeah, yeah I, I never thought that this would be a good time for people job change, but it's working. Yeah. Um, Jason, anything else that you're seeing that you're taking advantage of? Anything else from LinkedIn standpoint that you've seen work well? LinkedIn standpoint, yeah. I mean, um, definitely switching up the the approach to not just sending the initial message and and sending, you know, maybe a follow-up message a few days ago. Um, one thing that I know I struggled with when I first worked from home at a, at a different job was when to cut off the, the working hours and, you know, when you're done. So people will sit on LinkedIn on their phones on their couch and stuff. So just having those casual conversations, I think, at even at 8 p.m. at night, if they respond or something like that, being able to pick that up um, because people don't have that divide right now. And all these people are new working from home. So just, just having those conversations just as they come, um, I think is, is important, not just necessarily, you know, 8 to 5 p.m. <laughs> yeah i always hate that like just quit right away <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and i feel even more so like today too like just now in with this time and this challenges that we have that's going on you always and i think you said it earlier you got to use that we call it omni-channel approach and you probably heard that but like being everywhere and just being open and being willing to talk to people at different times um just like a a, a good little strategy to take advantage of yeah, absolutely. And then hopefully, you know, when I, when I give them a call, they, they know my name already, they've seen a post and they've, they've seen an email. So trying to get, you know, that's always our goal, but I think even now more with people, like you said, online so much, it can, it can definitely help with, with answering the phone calls and actually having a conversation when they answer. Amanda, you said something that uh, I want to go back to. Um, but also I think about it, you're, you have a team lead. How many people do you have on your team right now? Um, we have 10 people on our team total, 11 people on our team total. Yeah. So they're getting these call, uh, getting these things when people are saying, you know, the objection, so to speak, saying yeah. it's uh, why in the world are you calling me now? Uh, or, yeah. you know, I'm sure you have some folks who are probably a little bit more junior and they're probably like, you know, uh, what do I say to this? What are you coaching them on that? Or how are you telling them to react? Yeah, that's a good response? question. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so I'm telling them that, hey, if they say, why are you reaching out to me now? Um, when's a better time is not something that you want to ask because we don't know when this is going to be over. Um, so I, I just, I'm telling them, Hey, if they, they ask, why are you reaching out to me right now? Um, because I want to know how this is affecting you right now. COVID-19 yeah. is very new for everyone. It's affecting every industry and every company in different ways. So I'm talking to you now because I want to know what are you doing now? How is it affecting you? And, and can we help you through it? Um, so yeah. that's how, kind of our approach there. Yeah, I, I really like that. It's like, but I, I think there's a, there's so many people who are just so afraid right now. It's like I've, I had, you've probably seen a post on LinkedIn or, um, you know, Reddit or these other places where these uh, sales reps are just kind of like, you know, I feel bad calling people. And it's like, well, if you have something of value, you shouldn't feel bad about that. Yeah, even if it's not right absolutely. now, it's just a way of pivoting it. It's like your moral obligation to help them know I have a solution that can help you, especially as you're going through COVID. 
to, mm -hmm. you know, change stuff up. Do you guys see any changes with your, with the way that you're structuring your deals or does that not, or pricing is not being affected anything right now? Yeah. So our, um, this is something else Jason and I were just actually talking about today. Our sales cycle, if you will, it's a very, it's a very long sales cycle. It can take anywhere from nine months to a year, yeah. um, partnering with somebody to do this. So, um, we're definitely, it's definitely affecting that aspect. Um, and again, we've got deals in the pipeline now that the companies are going through major changes in their manufacturing. So we're trying to continue that open conversation and um, just slowly take things slower, if you will, to walk through it and, and let them know that we're here to help in any way we can. Jason, what's one of the biggest frustration that you have right now that you're trying to work through? As um, yeah, I mean, I'm definitely calling Amanda every single day when, I'm, <laughs> when, when I get a, a Amanda, new... like, dang it, everybody is hitting me up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you definitely, you, you, I've had to adjust probably three or four times. You, know, you get a nice opener of what you want to say and present yourself as a resource and then it's like you get a response and, and you just have to adjust on the fly. And I, I think I'm doing that a lot more than usual. You know, normally you can adjust your approach every few weeks or something like that as a BDR. Yeah. Uh, but now I feel like it's, it's every day, you know, we hear some, yeah. some different news and we got to shift what we're doing. Um, so I think that's, that's something that's frustrating, but um, you know, keeping you on your toes. Are you guys, do you, have you guys ever experimented or are you experimenting with videos at all? Like using Vidyard or Loom or any of those tools? Yeah, we use yeah, where our team uses Vidyard. Yay. See, I like you guys. <laughs> I knew I like you guys even more so. Yeah, Vidyard, I mean, no matter what it is, I'm, I use bomb bomb, but <laughs> I love Vidyard. So, um, well, I'm just and, kidding. <laughs> and we've partnered with, uh, with um, Vidyard recently and, and featured some other top folks on our podcast, um, people who have won some of the awards with video. But the point is, I feel, especially right now, video can be that way, going back to what we're saying, to give that personal thing, a personal connection as well as to show some empathy because it's like a real person. Like if I saw Amanda there with that awesome background and awesome picture, you know, Amanda is saying, you know, like, Hey Donald, just want to check in on you or something to the nature. I want to see how you're being affected by this. We have some resource I think could help you. Be like, okay. Let me see what she has to say. I'm open to learning more. I'm sitting at home working right now and I got more time. So can I entertain this conversation? It's like, yeah, let me see. And I think that's, and maybe being a sales rep, I'm even more lenient to other salespeople. <laughs> I think it's kind of in our blood. <laughs> I know, right? Somebody comes with a lame old pitch. I'm like, you know, I don't care. Oh, Let's talk. Let me help. You. <laughs> come here. Come here. Yes, let me give you some time. I'll give you at least one appointment today. So. Yes, and then I'll coach you on how to maybe do better next time. <laughs> <laughs> next time you do this, don't cry. <laughs> That's cool. If there's any other tips you have for folks who can take advantage of LinkedIn right now to help them with their, to staying in touch or to building up those reports, any other advice you guys have that you would give to someone, the BDR, SDR listening to this episode? Yeah, yeah I, think, um, I was, go ahead, Jason, you can go first. Right. <laughs> <I'll lose laughs> um, one thing we did kind of touch on, but um, I think just understanding that you're going to have to make adjustments uh, to the normal role, whether that is, um, you know, setting a meeting two weeks out instead of the next day, or just having that sales cycle out a little bit longer, or just the way that you interact with people on LinkedIn, you know, making those adjustments is definitely, you know, going to be a necessity in order to continue to set meetings and, and stay relevant. Yeah. Yeah. I would say, um, obviously be empathetic, but be authentic. Um, I think that we're so scared that we're going to, you know, interrupt somebody's day and they're going through everything with COVID-19. Uh, we interrupt people every day anyway, like even before COVID-19, that's what we did. We're in sales. We want to find out what you're doing. Um, don't be scared to reach out and find out how, how you can help someone and just be authentic. You know, if, if you're having, you know, kids running around the house and, and you're, you know, trying to work full time and figure out this homeschooling thing, like be honest about it. I had a conversation with someone the other day on LinkedIn about the same thing. Um, everyone's going through what you're going through. So just be authentic and don't be afraid to use your environment um, to open up a conversation. Yeah. I, I really like that idea of being using the environment because I think sometimes we, especially as salespeople, we try to put on a front, like we're 
I don't know about you, but you probably see this with some sellers, but some sales will they just want to be perfect or try to give off that, that, that view that they're perfect. It's like, bro, no, it's not like the other day I was on a call no. <laughs> and I have a seven month old and those pipes are working on him because he's down there screaming. <laughs> <laughs> and folks I, understood they're like yeah don't worry we know where you're coming from we thought it was our kid for a second i was gonna hit mute <laughs> so but it, it makes it, it makes it human right and i think yeah. that's what we need more so than ever um, no matter what strategy you use no matter what tactic and um, one of the other tactics that i tell people strategy is to use the linkedin voicemail again they can hear your voice and they can hear the realness in you and uh, that's one of that's the things. That's so that true. Was, yeah. Yeah. A, a coworker, Tori, just told me that yeah. yesterday um, that she, you know, got a voice recording from you. She's like, Amanda, <laughs> you may want to try this. I was more inclined to answer him. Um, so it does work. It absolutely does work. Yeah. It's, it's like, it, it's diff it definitely have the novelty, but also the fact is you can send a text, like a text written out message, but when somebody is, you, you, I think it's the expectation now that I have to respond because if Jason sent me mm -hmm. a message and it was a voice, it would be so rude not to respond at that mm -hmm. point. When mm -hmm. he took that much time, it doesn't take much time, but he took an effort to do that. It's like, okay, my mom didn't raise me to be that much of a jerk. <laughs> so, it's just like the videos. Right? Yeah, when you get yeah video just like the videos. Stuff like that, people are definitely more inclined. Yeah, it's the curiosity. It's like, why mm -hmm. did they do this? And then the... Again, what you go back to circle back, what you said about the empathy, uh, those things work, um, work so well. And the other thing that I'm sharing too, and that maybe this is something you all are seeing, is encouraging my team to interact more on people's content that they're sharing. So, so you know, certain few people are sharing stuff on LinkedIn. And if I could encourage them to interact on those posts, then what happens is that they get more people that they can connect with. Because what we do Let's say, for instance, if uh, Amanda did a post on, you know, homeschooling and, uh, you know, taking care of a kid and working right now full time. And then, you know, uh, Jason, you comment on her post. We are not connected. I send a LinkedIn connection to you. I might say, hey, Jason, I saw we both com uh, commented on Amanda's post. Yeah, the struggle yeah. is real. Um, <laughs> um, yes, it is. <laughs> looked over your profile. Thought it'd be great to connect and learn from you. Permission to connect here on LinkedIn, and then now I add you. But you're you you interacted with her post because you're probably at the same level as she is, and you could be a potential prospect. Like again, not the now or you know maybe a month from now or whatnot. But I'm gonna at least do that to help build up the relationship. And I think sometimes we tell uh, entry level folks, BDRs, uh, SDRs, or even AEs, go interact and they don't know what to do, but giving them some specific things like that helps a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Cool, all right, I asked for your one tip, but is there anything else that you guys would like to share? Any other <laughs> advice? I know you got tons of wisdom, so I probably could keep you for like an hour here, but. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> <laughs> if you were um, one major takeaway, you want somebody listening to this episode, one major piece of advice you want them to walk away with. Start with you, Amanda, what's that advice? Sure, push through, um, this is gonna end. So just maintain positivity. Uh, this isn't going to be, you know, the norm forever. So yeah. embrace it while you can. One of Blue Grace's um, major things that we say all the time, one of our core values is embrace chaos. So embrace it and lean into it and make something of it. I love that. Embrace yeah. chaos. <laughs> yeah. There you go. May I borrow that? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and how about you, Jason? Yeah, I don't have a, um, uh, one of our, or quotes, you know, embrace chaos and throw in there like Amanda. So mine's probably not as good, but um, you know, definitely for, for SDRs in specific is to just keep, keep pushing through when you get those, you know, people that are maybe nasty on the phone or something like that, just because they might be going through something that you don't understand right now. So in a time like this, making that next call as quickly as possible, sending that next email, I think is so important because people are going through things that aren't normal life right now, or hopefully, you know, something that we'll never have to experience again. So I think that has been the hardest thing to adjust to, but something that has, you know, made me benefit. That's awesome. If folks out there want to get in touch with you guys to stay connected or potentially to do business with you, what's the best way for them to go about doing so? Start On with you. LinkedIn Amanda. always. Always LinkedIn, LinkedIn all day. All right. Yeah. Yep. Same here. I have my email on there. Um, and I think number two. So, so LinkedIn is the go to. 
All right. So we'll put that stuff in our show notes. And so folks can find you on LinkedIn and so they can connect with you. But Amanda, thank you so much for coming on the show today. And Jason, I appreciate Thanks you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Anytime. That was Amanda and Jason, great individuals, and I highly recommend you go back and connect with them. I want you to take some of the ideas they shared in this episode and actually do them because that's all. That's how you're going to see success. That's how you're going to see improvement. If you're doing the same old, same old, and you're not seeing any result, then stop, collaborate, and listen. Actually, no, stop and change and do something different, and that's why I want you to do this. Also, you can find all the links to all the comments, all the show notes, and all the different details about this episode down below. And also, I want you to go ahead and subscribe. You can subscribe to our podcast if you haven't done so already. There are links down below, as well as go ahead and subscribe here so you can get notified every time we have a new video. As always, I do stuff like this because I want to help you. If you haven't done this as of yet, I want you to check out our course. For the month of April, we're trying to help you as you're going through and battling uh, selling during the coronavirus. So we want you to take advantage of our sales course. It's online, eight weeks, short, powerful videos, over 70 plus videos, and you could digest them on demand at your leisure. We have a group call each week and you will be able to get a chance to connect with myself as well as other sales reps who are going through the course and are seeing success. Take advantage of it. Use promo code success at checkout. Go to the salesevangelist.com slash course. Again, the salesevangelist.com slash course, or go ahead and click on a link as it pops up on your screen. Use promo code SUCCESS at checkout and we'd love to have you. As always, I do this because I want you to find more of those ideal customers. I want you to be able to know what to say when you reach out to them. I want you to know how to ask effective questions. I want you to be able to be a rock star once you're meeting with your prospects. And naturally, I want you to close more deals. But most importantly, I want you to go out each and every single day and to do big things. Stay tuned for the next episode. See you guys. Hey, thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video today. If you enjoyed the content, I ask you to go ahead and hit that like button, that thumbs up at the bottom right hand corner. Also to make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. This way we'll keep you up to date with all the latest sales strategies, latest tools, and things that are gonna help you to not only find more prospects, but to close more deals. Thanks so much.